It's week one of the high school regular season. School's in session and the excitement of football is here. Tonight, East Gatson battles Charles, Charles High School in the season opener. And on the Insight Sports High School Game of the Week, I'm Keith Miles along with Coach Jim Sauls. Tonight from East Gatson High School campus in Quincy, Florida, in Havana, Florida, that is. It is. And it's the Jaguars and the Timberwolves. Coach, live from Jaguar Stadium. This is going to be great. It's, it's a great night for football. It's not overly hot. Looks like the weather's going to hold off for us. And it's going to be a great opening game. Coach, we've got two outstanding coaches. Yes. And both uh, Corey Fuller and Coach Jans from uh, Ch uh, Childs High School, and they're going to match wits tonight. They are. They're going to they're gonna match. It's going to be really interesting to see how this goes. A beautiful afternoon. The captains are making their way out at uh, to midfield. And uh, for the home East Gats and Jaguars, it's Willie Cox, number 50. And it's number 14, Javon Perkins. And number five, I think that's number five there, Coach. Yes, five, I believe. He's got the jersey tucked up. Yeah, he's got it tucked up. We can't. And uh, the Timberwolves <laughs> captain's on the far side. And we're going to try to identify number 35 for Childs High School is Tucker Hill. He'll be playing middle linebacker and outside linebacker for the Timberwolves. Number three. And Chris Reed, Reed. who was an outstanding prospect. He's just a junior coach. Yes. And Florida State has identified him as somebody there look, taking a look at. Yep. Tulane, Tulane also. And so the Timberwolves will be decked out tonight in their white jerseys with uh, red and black numbers and black helmets. And the Jaguars in their home blue jerseys with Carolina blue numbers and blue pants and white helmets. And so it's a colorful night, a, a nice night here in uh, Havana. And uh, we've got some great high school football just ahead on the Insights High School Sports Game of the Week. Coach, we had a great start last week over at Florida High in sort of a jamboree setting. We did. We had that was great. Yeah, Florida High outlasted the Port St. Joe 15 to nothing, and East Gatson will kick off to Childs to start the game. So the the Timberwolves will go on offense first as we get this one underway from Havana, Florida. Got a good crowd on hand, Coach, as uh, the fans are it is. still coming in. They're still coming in. It's going right. to be a big crowd over here. Hey, fellas, uh, right now I have Coach Jan with me. Coach Jan, how you doing tonight? I'm uh, just ready to get going. All right. First game of the regular season. How are you feeling, and how would you say the week of preparation has gone for your guys? It went pretty good. We came off a good uh, victory in the kickoff classic, and, and uh, we didn't have a lot of film because East Gaston didn't play a kickoff classic, but we, we practiced hard. Okay. Uh, you're ranked number one defense in the area, also ranked number 10 in 7A. How do you make sure your guys don't uh, be complacent and coming out and competing today? Unfortunately, the two, 2016 season hasn't started, so those rankings don't mean anything right now. I don't know how they base us the number one defense when we haven't played a game yet. Uh -huh. So tonight, tonight, if we do what we do and shut them out or something, then, then you can start talking about ranking us. Uh, in the top ten. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, sir, and uh, good luck. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Brittany. That's our Brittany Christie. Yep. She did a great job last great week. Job. Looking forward to her reports tonight, along with Giselle Thomas will be working the sidelines for us tonight on the Insight Sports High School Game of the Week as well. Uh, East Gadsden will go on offense first as we get ready to get started, and we got a beautiful night, as we said, over here in Havana, Florida, and a great high school crowd. This is high school football country. Yeah. Yes, sir. The Jaguars will be kicking off. Okay. Kicking for the Jaguars is number 12. He said go ahead. All right. LaShawn Davis, LaShawn Davis will kick it off Back for the East Gatson Jaguars. And deep to receive number for seven, the Timberwolves of Childs High School is Nicholas Clayton, and we're all ready to go 
from Jaguar Stadium in Havana, Florida. And we get a, boy, a low driving like kick. Like a squib, squib kick. Yeah, he picks it up at the 20, 25, 30, 35, and a nice run back. The Timberwolves will have excellent field position from their own 39-yard line. First and 10, Childs High. Let's take a look at the Childs High School offense. Kamari Brown at one wide receiver. Mitchell Cooper is the left tackle. Connor Hansen, the left guard. He's drawn interest from Georgia Tech. Ron Darius Gibson is the center. Sam Neely, the sophomore right guard. Andrew and Abbott, the right tackle. David O'Meara is the tight end. And it's Avery Thomas at quarterback for Childs High School. Matt McArdle is the running back. Shane Sanders, the other running back. And Chris Reed, also a very talented ball player at the other wide receiver. Here we go from the 39-yard line, first and 10. And the Timberwolves moving left to right. And on first down, they hand it off. Inside run, and the, and the defensive front just stood him up. These guests has got a very big front. Oh, they do. That's Shane Sanders, the ball carrier for Childs High School. And Sanders is a 5'10", 170-pound senior. And on first down, he stopped for no gain. Second down and 10 for the Timberwolves. That East Gasson defensive front goes 225, 223, 15, and 227. And here we go. Avery Thomas on second down and 10. He wants to pass. He's yep. going to be sacked. Yep. He, they, were in the I, they were in the eye formation, and he was going to step back and hit a quick slant, and it wasn't, it wasn't there. Willie Cox on the stop for East Gadsden, and Willie Cox is one of those top prospects over here at East Gadsden High School. Second and about 14. We'll see what they got here. What are they going to call? Yeah, loss of four on third, the play. I mean, third. Third and that you're right, Coach. Third down and 14. A loss of four in the play. No score. And the Timberwolves, their first drive of the night. They're spreading them out a little bit. Going to send twin receivers to the far boundary and isolate a receiver to the near side, but we've got whistles. We have a timeout on the field. And East Gadsden wants to talk it over. They take timeout, and we'll take a timeout and be back on the Insights Inside Sports High School Game of the Week after this timeout. Spread up. All right, it's third down and 14 for the Timberwolves of Childs High School. And the ball's resting back at their own 35-yard line. Avery Thomas wants to pass. He's got Drop back. pressure again. Sacked. He's going to be sacked again. They were pretty well covered downfield. He had three, uh, like a slot to one side, split in the other, and they were covered. Plus, he had he had pressure. And so the first series for Childs ends up being a great series for East Gadsden's defense. It was. Uh, Casey Coon checks on the punt for Childs High School. As the Timberwolves Wolves punt on fourth down and 14, Coon gets off an end over end kick. And this one is going to sail out of bounds. About 28. Tyler Venesey was back to receive that punt. He'll be starting at uh, tailback for the East Gadsden Jaguars. Let's set the Jaguar offensive lineup. Danny Baker at the flanker. Jamichael Williams is the left tackle. Willie Cox is the left guard. Ladarian Lee, the center. Malik Rollins is the right guard. Marquise Saylor, the right tackle. Philanda Lewis gets the start at tight end. It's Thomas Jones at quarterback. Tyler Vinnessy at running back. And Darius Wiggins is the fullback. Deshaun Davis is the other wide out. And here we go. The Jaguars take over first down and 10 from their own 23-yard line. And on first down... They hand it off to Venice, and he's going to get a yard, maybe two. We'll see where they spot the football. Straight dive right up the middle. And looks like they're going to give him. A yard, I think, on the play. Second down, we'll call it nine to go. 
for East Gadsden. Keep moving the down box. Yeah. Second down. Here we go. They give it to Venice again, and once again, straight ahead, testing that defensive front for Childs High School. Nick Simmons, Connor Hanson, and John Gaines. And he's going to pick up a, another couple. It's going to bring up third down and about six yards to go yeah, for a first down for yep, Childs. They're just pounding that rock right up in there. Third down and about six to go. And as big as East Gadsden is on the defensive front, yep. they flip right over and go yeah, on offense. Go on offense. Third down. That's just a straight eye formation oh, there. Eye formation. And Thomas Jones under center. Okay. This time he runs toss. the toss sweep. Can't get outside. The penalty marker is thrown there. This will be big. Let's see what it is. Of course, they're all, like in football, they're all pointing at each other. Yeah. <laughs> they did it. No, they didn't. Yeah. And Childs is signaling an infraction against East Gaston. Yeah, they tried to run a straight toss outside, and Childs turned it in. It's holding is the call. The Timberwolves will decline. It brings up fourth down and about four to go for East Gadsden. And so the Jaguars and Coach Corey Fuller, it's decision time early in the ball game. Looks like he's going to send in his punter. Yeah, it's early. That's a smart move. Yeah. So far, they've both been pretty generic, you know, Franzel Lightburn is on the punt for East Gadsden. We had him as number 21 wow. on our roster. He boom man. That's a good kick it and was. great hang time. Yep. Uh, and it was fair caught back there by Shane Sanders. And so the Timberwolves on their second possession of the night will take over. First and 10 at the only 27-yard line. First down and 10 to go. So far, Coach, we've got another one of those defensive struggles Defense, starting We've got a defensive struggle started here. Let's see what Charles does now. Avery Thomas coming in after he gets his direction from the head coach and offensive coordinator. First down and 10 for the Timberwolves from their own 27. In the backfield is Shane Sanders. Twin receivers to the far boundary. They give it to Sanders, and Sanders tries to test that boundary, spinning and turning. He's got some running room, yep. and he fights his way out to the 40-yard line. That's going to be about a 12-yard gain on first down, and it'll move the chains. Outside zone play, and he made a good cut. You read that outside blocker. Yep, gain of 12 and a first down for the Timberwolves. They spot the football at the Childs High School 39-yard line. Avery Thomas at quarterback. This time he's going to send Chris Reed wide to the far boundary. And Kamari Brown is wide to the near side. They go eye formation this time. And they swing it out there for Reed. Reed turns up field and he's going to pick up a first down as he's bumped out of bounds in Jaguar territory at about the 48 yard line of East Gadsden. Yep, a little quick screen to the outside. Look like a little hesitation inside. I don't know whether that was by design to make it look like a fumble. Did it look like that to you? Yeah, it did. Look like a little hesitation in there. So I don't know whether that actually happened or it was something to slow the pursuit. But give Reed credit. He made a great run after catch and picked up the first down. He sure did. Ball's at the 48-yard line, 49-yard line of East Ganson. First and 10 for Childs. And Avery Thomas so under center, he gives it to Sanders yeah, once again. Outside. And Sanders fights his way down near the 40-yard line, out of bounds at about the 42, maybe the 43. We'll see where they spot the football. Ran that outside zone again. He, he went back left instead of right. They run that pretty good. And let's give that, that uh, offensive line of Childs High School some credit. They've got some guys up there who can block. Mitchell Cooper, the left tackle. Connor Hanson, the left guard. Rondarius Gibson, the center, Sam Neely, the right guard, and Andrew Abbott, the right tackle. Second down and about five to go for the Timberwolves. And Thomas drops back to pass 
And pass was intended down there for Kamari Brown. It's going to fall incomplete and bring up third down and five for Childs. If they can keep running and running that outside zone up in there and get some play action, you know, that then the rush is not as big a factor. Well, give Avery Thomas some credit. He is uh, mixing up his plays and advancing the football down the field. Third down and five for the Timberwolves from the East Gadsden 42-yard line. 6.41 to play in the first quarter. It's no score. Second possession for Childs High School. And Thomas rolls right, shoots his pass out, overthrows the intended receiver. Yeah, he did. Which was uh, number two, Curtis Hatch. 6'3", 190-pound senior. But it's going to bring up fourth down and five now for Childs. It, what the good news is, they ought to be able to gain some ground here. You know, even though they're punting, they should be able to, to pin East Gaston down here. Well, Casey Kuhn is <coughs> on the punt for Childs High School. And I think it's Venice who was deep to receive for East Gaston. He's standing back at his own 10-yard line. So they respect the foot of Casey Kuhn. I think they do. And Kuhn gets off another <coughs> nice punt. Venice makes the fair catch. Yep. And it's going to be first and 10 East Gatson on their second possession of the night at their own 15-yard line. And we'll be back with more of the Insight Sports High School Game of the Week after this timeout. Hi, fans. It's Brittany here. Uh, we have Miss Becky Thomas, who is uh, quarterback Avery Thomas' mom. Miss Becky, how are you doing? Great. How are you? All right. <laughs> You doing okay? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, great. Tell me how proud you are of your son. I know that he comes in uh, being the 2A player of the year. Uh, how, how proud of you are him, of him and his accomplishments? I am very proud of him. He actually got it his sophomore year. Um, the only other player that has received that award is Ernie Selms and, uh, on their sophomore year, you know, during his sophomore year. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, and we greatly appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, on first down. Thank you, Brittany. On first down, Thomas Jones gets the carry for a gain of one, second down and nine to go for the East Gatson Jaguars with the ball resting at their own 16-yard line. 6.15 to play. There's no score, and this is the Jaguars' second possession of yep. the night. Second possession. All right, here we go. Thomas Jones at quarterback. Slot eye. High formation. Jones, quick drop, throws the slant. Slant. Great reception, and he's got... A great run all the way down to the 45-yard line. Yep. And that's Dontavious Robertson, the junior, and a great slant catch and run after catch. That was great. He, that will move the chains. Yeah, he put that on the money. And then, and then, of course, he was able to get under the defender and get on upfield. So it's first and 10 for the Jaguars <coughs> now at the Timberwolves' 45-yard line. And a little life of, in the offense now of East yep. Gadsden. They gave him a little spark. Thomas Jones this time gives to his first back through. Yep. It looks like it was Tony Street, the ball carrier. He's going to pick up about two yards. And now we've got a penalty marker on the play. check out what the infraction is. It's going to go against East Gadsden. Unsportsmanlike conduct. And coach, when you're a coach, you just absolutely hate those kind of people. You hate it. Oh my gosh. You got you just had a slant break. You're up here. Good position. Got a great two yard run on first yeah. down. And then you get an unsportsmanlike 15 yards. Big. That's huge. That's huge. I'm sure Coach Fuller will have a yeah, nice conversation yeah, on the yeah, sideline. I'm staying there having a little meeting. All right, here we go. Second down now and about, uh, about 22 yards to go. Jones rolling. What, what? Sack. Actually, we were running a little. Looks like we were running a little wildcat that time. He was looking downfield. Had a different quarterback rotate in 
on that play. But he's going to be sacked even farther back. And it's going to bring up third down and uh, 20, let's say Quincy to 30, go. <laughs> 40. Yeah. Third down and long. Boy, talking about whew, a turnaround. That's a big turnaround. After the big slant. That unsportsmanlike conduct. That and, the penalty. and then a sack on top of that. Yeah. We do have a new quarterback in for East Gaston. And it's uh, Thomas Jones. Thomas Third Jones. Looks like Thomas Jones may have, have switched jerseys. I wonder if he did. James yeah, Murray is wearing 10. So Thomas Jones is wearing 5. Okay, so we got an adjustment to our roster. Thomas Jones is wearing number five. And now East Gasson gets another five yards for an illegal substitution. Yeah. They're going the wrong way, Coach. They're good. Yeah. Charles is loving this. Yeah. Third down and Gretna. For Gretna, <laughs> yeah. Let me be about Gretna. <laughs> Yep, and Adam out of Fogles, yeah. Yep, they Third got down it. and out of Fogles. They Third down, and the ball's not like at the 26-yard line. Jones throws the pass. Oh, he put that in there. He put beautiful pass intended for number 21. Of well, let me check this other roster. That was Frenzel Lightburn. Yep. Or either Deshaun Davis. They, I think they may have switched jerseys. Yeah. But well, it falls incomplete. And it, all we can do is go with the numbers they gave us. Yeah. So it brings up fourth down and out of Pogus yeah. for uh, East Gadsden. And uh, Childs Timberwolves will have Shane Sanders deep to receive this punt. Childs should once again get excellent field position. They should. Of Good snap. High end over end kick. Short. Short kick, and it takes a Timberwolves bounce it's on the other side and, of the 50. Yeah, and so Childs will have it first down and 10 with the football at about the 47 yard line of East Gatson. And there's timeout here in Havana, and we'll be back on the Insights High School Game of the Week after this break. All right, we're back, and Avery Thomas has an eye formation for the Childs Timberwolves, gives it to Shane Sanders, and Sanders is going to be trapped behind the line of scrimmage and immediately stopped. Yep, they tried a little counterplay to the fake fullback one side, pulled and tried to go back the other way, and it was nothing there. It looks like it was Terrence Nelson on the stop for the East Gasden Jaguars. Brings up second down, about 12 to go for the Childs Timberwolves. Kamari Brown wide to the far boundary, and it's Chris Reed to the near side. Shane Sanders is the lone setback for Avery Thomas, and they give it to Sanders again. Sanders this time back past the original line of scrimmage, but we've got a penalty marker on the play, on the play and let's see, it may be an infraction against the Timberwolves. Another nice run by Shane Sanders, Coach. He, he, he smooths. He, find, he just finds, he'll get up in there and he finds creases. But it's going to be holding. And a chop block. Oh, it's a per chop block against the Timberwolves, and that'll back him up. We had a holding was the call against the Timberwolves. The chop block went. Okay, here we go. Let's, let's set it straight. The chop block was by Childs. Holding, defensive holding was the call against East Gasson. There you go. Those two penalties, are they going to offset? Or are they going to assess? They're assessing the uh, holding against Childs. So they assess the holding against Childs. It's going to take it all the way back to the 36-yard line of Childs. And it'll make it third down. And about 26 yards yep. to go for Charles High School. Yeah, they're, they're both shooting each other in the foot. I mean, they are themselves. 
Yeah, second down and long, about 26. Thomas shoots this, but the ball pops out, and it's going to be recovered by East Gadsden at the child's 30-yard line. That pass was complete. Yep, it was. <clears throat> I don't know if he'd have made anything on it, but it was complete. Yeah, Kamari Brown, and it pops out, and East Gadsden comes up with a big fumble recovery. It's Terrence Nelson. That's the second big play for Terrence Nelson it tonight. It is. That's a momentum changer right yeah. there. East Ganson has a first and 10 at the Child's 30-yard line, and they are threatening. All right, here we go. Thomas Jones has Tony Street in the backfield. Since twin receivers to either side, she's got a spread formation. Shouts his instructions and shifts Street to the near boundary. And on first down, he gives it to Street and Street straight up the middle. Yep, he did. Fights his way down near the 20 yard line, maybe inside the 20. Let's see where they spot the football. He just spread him out and just handed it to him right up in the. He cut it right up the inside. That's an 11-yard gain, and they'll move the chains. First and 10 for East Gadsden at the child's 19-yard line. Yeah, I think they're trying to spread out that defensive front by, yes. do it, by doing yeah. this. Yeah. Again, spread formation, twin receivers to either side. This time they fake the handoff to the street, and Jones is run out of bounds. He's going to lose a yard or so on the play. Yeah. Play fake, a little bootleg. Make it second down and about 11 yards to go for East Gadsden. I'm waiting for one of them to do that, pull it, and come out of there and throw it. Ball's resting at about the 22-yard line, so it lost about two, almost three on the play. So it's second down, we'll call it a long 12 to go. Both teams are playing real good defense, obviously. Yeah. obviously. Triplets this time to the far boundary for East Ganson. Jones throws the screen out there, and boy, he is rocked immediately. Wow. But the ball luckily flies into the hands of his teammate. Yep, that could have been bad. I mean, that, that could have been a turnover. Philanda Lewis makes the reception. And Lewis is going to advance the football for a couple of yards, but it can bring up third down at about 14 yards to go. They're going to say it was a loss of one on the play, so third down and about 14 to go. But East Ganson was lucky that was were, not a turnover. They're very lucky. That thing shot out of there, and I went, where did it go? And it went right to his teammate. Katarius Deans is wide to the far boundary this time. Triplets to the near side, one setback. That's Tony Streeton. Childs trying to bring the blitz. That pass is caught, and it's going to go in for the touchdown. That's a good play. They blitz. They threw it play. right over the middle, right over the linebacker that blitz. And in front of the safety. And it's friends. Is it friends of life, Brian? Yes, I think so. It's Deshaun Davis. Yes. So, yes. Yes. Frenzel Lightburn and Deshaun Davis have reversed jerseys. They've reversed jerseys. So, it's Deshaun Davis he, who puts the Jaguars on the board first. Yep. That was a good call. It was a play fake. They released the receiver right over the middle. The two-point conversion is good. And the Jaguars take an 8 nothing lead over the Childs Timberwolves. And we'll be back with the Inside Sports High School Game of the Week after this timeout. Deshaun Davis and a beautiful sunset. <laughs> look, at that, here. look at that sunset. Wow. Can't get much better than that, no, Coach. No, it doesn't. That doesn't look better than that. Well, it can't get much better than what Deshaun Davis did. No, it can't. 24-yard touchdown pass and a two-point conversion. He made the sun come out. Yeah, gives the Jaguars an 8-0 lead. End over end kick. And here we go. Kamari Brown on the kick. He's got running room. Kamari Brown bumped out of bounds on the far sideline near the 45-yard line of Childs High School. So they got good field position. And once again, excellent field position for the Timberwolves. Yep, they got to get something going here. Yeah. 
So Childs will begin first and 10 at their own 45 yard line with two minutes and a one second remaining in the first quarter. It's eight nothing, East Gadsden. All right, here we go, Avery Thomas and the Childs offense. Gonna send Chris Reed wide to the near side. Load the eye formation, an offset eye, yep. and gives it this time to Shane Sanders. And again, Sanders fights his way for three, maybe even four. We'll see where they spot the football. That's a nice yep. first down run. We're in the eye with the, with the fullback offset, like a king or queen set, depending on where he is. And they just ran it right up in there like a power play. Second down, let's call it seven to go for Charles Timberwolves. The ball's resting at about the 48-yard line of Childs. Avery Thomas under center again. Eye formation gives to his eye back. The ball pops out. Let's see who gets it. The gas, East Gas and Jaguars say they have it, and they do have it. That ball is recovered. Was it number 14? Darius Wiggins. Darius Wiggins comes up with the big fumble recovery, and just like that, East Gadsden is back in business, Coach. They are. On the plus side of the 50 in Child's territory. This thing can change quick. First down and 10 for East Gadsden, and they lead it 8-0. The Jaguars. The twin receivers to the near boundary. Checking into the lineup is Danny Baker. He's going to be wide and isolated to the far side for Thomas Jones. Jones gives it to Street, and Street finds running room, and he's going to fight his way down inside the 35 to about the 34-yard line. And, Coach, that's about a 13, maybe a 14-yard run. He just gave it to the near back straight up. They, they ran that play a while ago and made that first, first down with 11 yards. Was that play? Was that dive up in there? And he's going to get about 13 on that run and another first down for the East Gaston Jaguars. Ball is resting at the Child's 35 yard line and once again, the Jaguars are threatening. Thomas Jones gives it to Streeter again and this time he's gonna lose yards. That's a great defensive play up front by Connor Hanson, John Gaines and Nick Simmons. There's not much running room on no, there on that play. There wasn't any. I got to tell you, Coach, I think uh, Tony Street may have a little, been a little winded after that 14-yard run, too. I think he was, too. And it's early in the season. Too. Early in the season. Still hot. 35 seconds to go in the first quarter. Second down and 10. No gain on the last play. And, boy, there's a fumble. fumble. Looks like the Jaguars will retain possession. Looks like a first game, doesn't it, with the mistakes? Yeah. Yeah. A few fumbles here, and turnovers, and penalties. That may have been the last play of the first quarter, Coach. I think it will be. And so with our score, East Gadsden High School 8 and Childs nothing, the Insight Sports High School Game of the Week continues after this timeout. Well, it's a beautiful afternoon of, and about to be evening over yeah, here in Havana, yeah, Florida. The, the sun is setting. It's going. And the East Gas and Jaguars are trying to pound it in on the Childs High Timberwolves. They leave 8 nothing, and they have the football in Childs territory once again. And it's Jones who's going to keep it. And Jones is going to be forced out of bounds near the 30-yard line of Childs. And now we've got two penalty flags Whoa. on the play. And as they sort it all out, and a personal foul against Childs. And boy, that's that's a nightmare for a coach. That will make you pull your hair out. 
You already got him on the plus yeah. side of the 50. You're going to give him yep, another 15. Wow. That, that, this is big, Coach. It's very big. 15-yard penalty is going to take it down inside the red zone to the 16-yard line. And I know Coach Jans is not happy with that. That that list of plays you got right now, Keith, is small. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's a limited group. Yep. And you're already tra already trailing 8 nothing. Yeah. And you give them that kind of field position. There's timeout on the field taken by Childs. And with a break in the action, 8 nothing our score. We'll be back after this break. Bars threatening now at about the 16-yard line of the Childs High School Timberwolves inside the red zone and coach with an 8-0 lead. And here we go. I'm going to hand that thing off again, I think. The yeah, Jaguars spread them out with triplets to the far boundary, but they give it, it to Tony Street once again. And again, Street fights his way down inside the five, down to the four, maybe the three, depending on where they spot the football. He's, he's averaging 11. The last three runs. Yeah. They spot him at the four-yard line, so it's first and goal to goal for East Gadsden. And, Coach, that personal foul big. It's going to play loom big on this drive. Yep. The ball is inside the five yard line. All right, now and he's got two backs in the back. Yeah, I formation. And this time they give it to Street again. He tries to follow, tries to follow his big line up front, but there's nothing there. No, it wasn't. They, I keep waiting for him right now when everybody thinks they're going to run it to play fake that thing in and bootleg out. Yeah, Martavius Gray was his lead interference, and Coach Martavius Br Gray is a big boy. Yeah, he is. Second and goal to goal for the Jaguars. They give it to Street once again. He tries to bounce his way to the outside, but there's no nothing, no place to go. No room in the end. And it's number 13, Jace Edgar, a senior, six foot, 205 pounds for the Charles Timberwolves, who makes the stop. He's going to bring up third down and go to go for East Gaston. Ball's resting inside the five at the four-yard line. Right. Third down and go to go. And uh, quarterback Thomas Jones. This time has uh, two backs in the backfield yep. and I formation. Isolated receiver to the far boundary and twins to the near side, and we've got delay of game called against East Gaston. And if you're Corey Fuller? Yeah, and you're, you're right there on the goal line. You back up five yards. Now you back up five. All symptoms of uh, the first game of the yep. season. Very, yep, very definitely. Two weeks from now, neither one of them will be making yeah. those kind of mistakes. And although you practice, you go through these drills, until you're in an actual game setting. It's not the same. It's not the same. Nope. You're exactly the intensity right. level's up. The yep. effort's up. All right, here we go. Thomas Jones under center. He's going to throw the fade. It's up in the air. It's caught, but I think he caught it out of bounds. And it's going to bring up fourth down for East Gadsden. With the ball back at about the nine-yard line with 9.46 to play. So now we'll see if uh, Coach Fuller we'll kick or go for trusts his kicker to right. kick a field goal. That's right. They went for two. They went for two, which tells me he, he might not be that confident. He's going for it. Yep, fourth down and goal to goal. Ball at the nine, and the Jaguars are going for it. That slot to the left. 
Yep, there's yeah. actually three trips over there. Tri trips to the far boundary. Isolated over here to the near side. Three, Tony Street Jones. is the lone setback. Right, and Jones man. looking to pass. Dumps it over the middle, and it's going to fall incomplete. Yeah. And so the, give Childs some credit, Coach. Yep. The Childs defense. They did. They could have packed it up. They didn't do it. They held. Yep. And ball was actually down at the four-yard line, but they stiffened. Yep. And we still stand at 8 nothing yep. for East Gaston. Yep. He, he had the ball he was throwing. He, he had the receiver he was throwing to. He just threw it a little short. Yeah. And so the Childs Timberwolves now will take over first and ten from their own nine-yard line. 9.42 to play here in the second quarter, and it's 8 nothing for East Gaston. Avery Thomas throws his pass out here. Great catch by Makari Brown. And Brown is going to be bumped out of bounds yep. near the 25, around the 26-yard line. That's a first down. Good route, Charles. good head fake inside, and then he popped back outside after he caught it. They're going to mark him at about the 22-yard line, first and 10 for the Timberwolves. A lot better than where they were. Yeah. Here we go, the Timberwolves this time send twin receivers to the far boundary, isolate a receiver to the near side, and they throw the out down here to that isolated receiver. It was intended for Curtis Hatch, 6'3", 190, a senior, but it's gonna fall incomplete and make it second down and 10 for Childs High School. Uh, Childs High School coach named after the former governor yes. of the state of Florida, Lawton Childs, the late Lawton Childs. Yeah, right. Second down and 10. And Avery Thomas this time swings it out of the backfield. That's really a lateral. Yep. Sanders alertly picks it up and advances it forward near the 30-yard line. And, boy, uh -oh. then he's hit on the sidelines, and we see two – Penalty markers fly yeah. up in the air. Might have been a hit out of bounds. That's what I'm guessing. Well, they're discussing it on the sideline, and it looks like an infraction against East Gadsden. He was alert on that on that one. They yeah. they flared the back yeah. and really he didn't have enough separation to quarterback. I didn't think he was. But anyway, he hit him in the hands and it went out, but it was actually a lateral. Yeah. And we've seen that happen so many times when the back would give up on the play and they the get defense it. would recover it and they would have the football. And that's why we'd always if we had flare passes, yeah. we'd always tell our quarterback to throw it. And when you throw it, back up two steps. Just in case. Yeah. The official looked back late. So it was a personal foul against East Gasson. Gonna bring up first and 10, but Avery Thomas is gonna be sacked in the backfield or tackle for loss. He was actually the ball yep, carrier. He was. And it was a design play, but he's gonna lose. There's your boy. He's gonna lose, a, I'm not, let's see, he's gonna lose about five, six yards on the play. So yep. we rank up second down and about 16 to go for the Childs High School Timberwolves. And one thing about high school football this time of year, all the politicians they're come out, out. They're out. That's Americana its best. Second and 16, and Avery Thomas wants to pass. He's got pressure. Throws the screen underneath. Yep. Yep. It's caught. And they read it. They had a man over there. By Shane Sanders. And he's going to lose a couple more yards. Gonna bring up third down and long now for Childs High School. Third down and about 18 yards to go for the Childs High Timberwolves. Ball's resting at their own 36, 37 yard line. Avery Thomas. Going to throw, come one downfield. Oh, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. That's Chris Reed. He, just he almost made the catch, Coach. Yeah, he sure did. He got one hand on it. 
<clears throat> It'll bring up fourth down. And about 16 yards to go for Charles High. And it's Casey Kuhn on the punt for Childs High School. And deep to receive for Tyler Venesey for East Gaston, who makes the fair catch at about the 27, 28 yard line. And the Jaguars will begin first and 10 from there. A Tyler Venesey coach. Uh, uh, for East Gadsden with a 3.2 grade point average. Wow. Wants to be a medical doctor. Plans to go to college and major in biology and then on to med school. There you go. All right. There's a timeout on the field. 8 nothing. The Jaguars lead the Timberwolves. And we'll be back after this timeout. All right. Here we go. Tyler Jones has a man oh. downfield. That pass is caught. Gone, he cuts good. inside at the 20, 15, 10, He's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, East he Gadsden. He and that is Dante. Is, is it Deshaun Davis? You no, know, it's Dontavious. It's Dontavious Robinson. They say Robinson. after a turnover, that's the best time to go after somebody. And boy, they did. That's a big play for the East Gaston Jaguars. 71 yards. Dontavious Robinson. What a great run after the catch. Yes. Yep. Yeah, the, the, the defenders had an angle, and he just planted his foot in the ground, cut back across the middle between, and then out ran him. All right, the Jaguars going to go for the extra point this time. Snap placement, kick is blocked, and no good. It was Zandavian Atkins who attempted the point after, but it's no good. And so the Jaguars lead 14 to nothing, and there's timeout here in Havana, and we'll be back after this break. I'm here with Miss Kay Thomas. Miss Kay, how are you doing? I'm good. All right. How do you feel coming out here as a parent and uh, being in support of your son? I feel very excited. We're looking for a great year this year. Absolutely. And uh, what would you say about the spirit of East Gas? And we have a great turnout tonight. Oh, yeah. We always here. We support our Jags. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. And back to you, Keith. Our Brittany Christie. Thank you, Brittany. 14 to nothing. East Gadsden leads after a 71-yard pass to Dottavius. Rob's a great run after the catch. That's a great throw and a run. It was yeah. all of it. Yeah, and the extra point was no good. And so the Jaguars all set to kick it off. Lightburn will do the honors. And, Coach, uh, Childs has had opportunities. They, they just have. haven't made things happen on the offensive they, end. They, they can't put it, piece it all together. Right. 14 to nothing, East Gatson leading. And there's an infraction against East Gatson on the kick. So they'll back him up and kick it again. Uh, if there's one weakness in the East Gatson program kicking. that we've seen tonight, it's the kicking game. It's kicking game. Yeah. I got some light on the subject now. now. Here we go. We end over it. end kick. Good kick. Yeah, it was. And uh, this is Nicholas Clayton on the return for Childs. And Clayton's going to bring it out to about the 35, 36 yard line, maybe the 37. Yep, that's how I see it. And it'll be first and 10 for the Timberwolves there. Be curious to see if they open it up a little bit here. They still got plenty of time. I mean, there's lots of time left. 
14 and nothing. The Jaguars lead. Deshaun Davis caught a 24-yard touchdown pass, and the East Gaston converted on the two-point conversion to take the early 8-0 lead. And then at 7:31 in the second quarter, Dontavius Robinson on a 71-yard pass reception. The extra point no good. The Jaguars lead it 14-0, and we've got an infraction on the kickoff. And it's going to back um, Childs up. Back to about the 28-yard line yeah, now. They just keep putting themselves into a, a, yeah. deep, a deeper ditch. Avery Thomas going all the way at quarterback tonight for the Timberwolves. And Thomas sets up, wants to pass, throws downfield. Got a man down there. That pass almost caught. He about had it. So that was Chris Reed once again. Yep, and it was thrown on the money. <laughs> he would have caught it down at about the 28 on the other end. Yeah, it was Jake Meyer, the intended receiver, falls incomplete. Second down and 10 to go. 7-11 to play here in the first half. Thomas under center this time with a wing back. And they give it off to Sanders. And there's Sanders with a nice run. Turns up field. And Shane Sanders is all the way down inside Jaguar territory at about the 45, 46-yard line. And another penalty marker comes down. They came back to the play they had success earlier yep. where they run that outside zone right at that end and read that block and let him bend and do his thing. And, and they've got to they come back to that. Yeah, that's the bread and butter. That's there, bread Chris. and butter. That'll move the chains, get you out of trouble. And it's a personal foul against the Jaguars. Wow. Tack on another 15 yards and once again, Coach, Coach Fuller is not going to yeah, like that very much. That's what set up the Jaguars' yep. score. Now here comes. The Timberwolves, they're threatening. The ball now inside the 35-yard line at about the 32, first and 10 for Childs. Receivers to either side for Avery Thomas. He'll load up an eye formation. And Shane Sanders is the eye back. They toss this one out here to Chris Reed, and Chris Reed yep. makes a move. He takes it inside the 10. And Reed down to about the four-yard line, and yep. that'll move the chains. That's and here come the Timberwolves. That was a good quick screen. And you can see why Jimbo Fisher and Florida State have an interest in that young man. Yes, absolutely. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't need but a crack, and he's gone. First and goal to go for Childs. The ball resting now at the East Gadsden four-yard line. Reed's going to go wide to the far side. Kamari Brown over here to the near side, and Shane Sanders in the backfield. They give it to Sanders. Sanders tries to bounce outside, turns upfield, and he's going to be bumped out of bounds. Looks like at about the one-yard line. Yeah, it's close. They came back with the same play to the outside yeah. zone. They've got to keep running. They, they can't run just that, but they've got to keep yeah. hitting that. Yeah. Second down and goal to goal. Ball is resting. Looks like at about the two-yard line of East Gadsden. Again, they load up the eye formation. And this time, the quarterback keeps. Tries to lay that football across the end zone Ooh, line. He didn't, he didn't make much. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I think this, this is going to be stopped for no game. That's what I think. Third and goal. Third down and goal to go. Avery Thomas gets the play. Uh, Sink Amari Brown wide to the far side. And over here to the near side is Curtis Hatch. Fumble. Ah. Jaguars say they have it. Let's see.
Jaguars they have it. They got it. They turned it over. They turned it over, Coach, on the two-yard line. And he's Gatson. He's Gatson's defense it. now up front. It's solid. Yeah, solid. And with our score, East Gadsden 14, Childs High School nothing. We'll be back on the Insights High School Game of the Week after this break. All right, Insight Sports Game of the Week. It's East Gadsden High School against the Childs High Timberwolves. And the Jaguars take over deep in their own territory. And they hand it off. It was a nice game. Tony Street. Tony Street's going to battle his way out near the 10 yard line. The ball was about at the two. He's going to yep. cross the five and get out to about the eight yard line. And one of the Timberwolves got up a little gimpy there, but yeah. he's trying to hang in there. That's number 33, Amari Gaynor. Yeah. yeah, he made about six. Yeah, about, call it second and about five to go. Looks like he actually may have gotten six yards on the play. Here we go. Jaguars load up the eye formation. They got a big, big guy back there playing the up back. And this time they give it to the big, yeah, the big, big back. That's a big old fullback. Wow. That's number 10 for East Ganson who carried the ball. It's James Murray. And Coach James Murray is just a sophomore. Really? Wow. 10th grader. Third down and two to go for the Jaguars. To take you back a couple of Super Bowls, if you had a Marshawn Lynch in the backfield, yes. what would you do, right? <laughs> You'd give it. <laughs> and then get the there. street again, and Street's going to have the first down and more as he fights his way across the 20, out to about the 21, maybe the 22-yard line, but that'll move the chains. That young man's a threat. And he's the first down for East Gaston. Well, Insight Sports, revealing a whole new view of sports and life. Insights by Insight, and that's spelled with two eyes in the middle. And here we go, first and 10, East Gaston. They spotted at the 19 yard line. They run the toss sweep this time. And we're going to be cut. He's going to be cut down just shy of that 20-yard line. So, no gain on the play. Tyler Venice is going to be stopped for no gain. Tyler It'll be Vinicius. second down and 10 to go for East Gaston. 3:35 and counting left to go in the first half. Your score, East Gaston, 14. Boy, that was a big opportunity to not take advantage of. Yeah, ball right there on the two-yard line. Went all the line. way down the field knocking on the door and end up turning it over. All right, Thomas Jones backs in the eye formation, an isolated receiver to the far boundary and twins to the near side and they give it to the eye back. That's uh, Tyler Venesey. And Venesey is going to fight his way to the 30-yard line and that'll move the chains. Get another first down. That's a first down. Tyler Venesey would be a great candidate for our Dr. Arthur Woodard Student Athlete of the Week. It honors a student athlete from the host team with high academic standards and athletic success. And certainly Tyler Venesey with a 3.2 GPA wants to become a medical doctor. He fits that description. And there he goes. He gets the ball again. And Venesey tries to bounce outside, fumbles the football. And it looks like the Childs Timberwolves are going to recover. Yeah, they got now and ran that isolation up in there again. And the ball and came out. And Childs is going to have it at their own, at the East Gadsden 35-yard line. And on the recovery for the Timberwolves is Armari Gaynor. And so, wow. just like that, the Jaguars turn it over. 2.33 to go in the first half. And Childs gets a break. They do. Let's see if they can do something with it. Avery Thomas. 
All right, first down and 10 for the Timberwolves of Childs High School. Ball's resting at the East Gadsden 35-yard line. Avery Thomas under center, barking signal. He fumbles the snap, but picks it up and lunges for it for a yard. Make it second down and nine to go. That's the second exchange problem. They, the exchange problem is the reason they had to fumble on the goal line. Right. When it came out. Right. Second and nine for the Timberwolves. Down 14 to nothing. And Coach uh, got to go back to the bread and butter. Yes. That zone that zone read. He better come back. Shane Sanders is the eye back, and there it is. They give it to him, and Sanders. With the lead blocker out there. Yeah, fights his way down inside the 30 to about the 29-yard line, and so he's going to pick up about five, maybe six yards on that carry. Yep. And make it third down and about four to go for Childs. Ball spotted right at the 30-yard line. Third down and four for the Timberwolves. And we've got whistles. Down and about four to go for the Childs Timberwolves. Coach Corey Fuller of East Gadsden saw something he didn't like, wanted to talk yeah. it over. Childs and should have two, they should have two downs here. Avery Thomas, and they actually may have drawn East Gadsden offside. Let's see, there's penalty markers on the play. And that'll move the chains. Encroachment is the call against East Gadsden. They only needed four. They get five yards, and that gives Childs a first down and 10 now at the Jaguar 25-yard line. Just outside of the red zone, and here come the Childs High Timberwolves. They trail 14 to nothing with a minute 29 to play in the first half. And they give it to Shane Sanders again, and Sanders. Fights his way down to the 20-yard line on first down, Coach. That's about a five-yard run. Yep. You'll take that any night of the yes. week. Second and five is, is not a bad call. You can make a call on that. That's right. Second down and about five to go. Great-looking run. Yep. And once again, that's the bread-and-butter play for Childs tonight. Yeah, and they got, they got one minute to do something. Avery Thomas under center. Offset eye this time. Play action. And Thomas. Has pressure ah. and he's going to be sacked. You know what? That's a great looking defensive play. It was a, I thought that play would be there. That was a great job by the defense. And, and outside linebacker, defensive end, he stayed right there. He never left. Terrence Nelson once again, coach. And he's got to be uh, one of the leading candidates for our defensive player yes, of the game. Should be. And uh, Childs takes time out. And about 20 yards to go. Timberwolves trail 14 to nothing. And Avery Thomas from the gun. Twin receivers near side. He has an isolated receiver out here. Throws the screen. And, boy, that pass is incomplete. Yep. Bounced right off his hand. Jace Jordan Roberts was the intended receiver. And uh, it's going to bring up fourth down for Childs. And I think Coach Jan is going to go for it here, Coach. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I probably would too. Yeah. With 39 seconds left. 14 to nothing, East Gadsden. Childs has had opportunities, but have not cashed them in. Uh -uh. And then when they've made things happen, they've, they've made a mistake. They've right. got a penalty or turnover. Turnover, yeah. Turnover down here on the goal line. Yeah, because they get that in, they're they're a touchdown away. And we've got another timeout on the field. Um, this time by the Childs High Timberwolves. On fourth down, about uh, 20 yards to go. Got to decide What's just that? what they want to do. Yep. And this is their last timeout of the first half. Reach down in that bag and see which one you're going to pull. Yep. It's been a fun first half. It has. East Gatson made some big plays. And the Timberwolves had some things going, but just could not cash them in. Couldn't cash them. Well, we're in 
play resumes. It'll be fourth down and about 20 yards to go for the Timberwolves. And Childs is going to go for it. It's Avery Thomas in the backfield along with Shane Sanders. Shane Sanders has been the workhorse tonight <laughs> he on has. offense he with really, Childs. He really has. And Thomas wants to pass. Lays one out there. This pass is incomplete. Yeah. Intended for Chris Reed. Yeah. And once again, tremendous pressure. They're in on this side. By Terrence Nelson. He, they, they, can't, they can't block him. Yeah. And we have a turnover now. If nobody is looking at Terrence Nelson, somebody should after this game. They should. Oh, yeah. Tackle had to reach and almost try to grab him. Right. And that didn't work. Yeah. So the Jaguars will take over with 32.2 seconds remaining in the first half and with a 14 to nothing lead. And you can bet Coach Corey Fuller is going to be pleased with oh, yeah. this lead at halftime. Yep, and they get the ball back, right? That's right. They get the ball back. They get back. the ball back to start the second half. All right, here we go. Thomas Jones takes the snap and takes a knee. Took a knee and going to let it roll. And that's going to let it roll out. That may be the last play of the first half, and it looks like it's going to be. Depends on when they spot it. Yeah, they haven't spotted it yet, so. I 12 think, seconds. Yeah, right. they're going to let it, it run It wouldn't matter, down. wouldn't matter. Yeah. He spotted it. And that's going to be the end of the first half of the Inside Sports High School Game of the Week. East Gadsden, 14, and Childs High School, nothing. And we'll be, oh, Brittany is standing by. Brittany Christie is standing by. Let's go down and talk with Brittany. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Coach Fuller. Coach Fuller, how are you doing right now? I'm, 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 very, I'm very excited for our kids. They're playing hard, what we want to do. Um, I think that we got a lot to uh, fix in their halftime. They're not going to give up. They were the playoff team last year. They got a lot of great players over there. We just got to do our job. Now, this is a team that you lost to uh, last year, but you're up 14-0. How do you make sure that your guys don't become complacent or too relaxed with this lead? You can't come complacent when you won one game last year. I'm going to go ahead and get on them and put the pressure on them to stay up and keep, keep going and keep putting the pressure on them. Absolutely. Uh, Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Brittany, with Coach Corey Fuller. It's halftime here in Havana, 14 to nothing, East Ganton, leading Childs High School. And we'll be back with our Insight Sports halftime show after this time. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Al Lawson. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, great to be back here in Gaston County. Uh, absolutely. Now, you're from Gaston County, and you're back here at, uh, at East Gaston. How are you enjoying the game? Oh, it's a great uh, game. Uh, I'm happy to see that East Gaston is ahead at halftime. I want them to hold on for a victory. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, as a former athlete, what advice uh, would you give to the football players who are out on the field who, of course, are dealing with academics and coming out onto the field uh, to get ready for the game? Well, you know, I would tell all of them that they need to stay in school, to 30, study hard, uh, train hard for ath athletics so they have the opportunity for a college scholarship. But it's nothing more important uh, coming from a community like this is being able to attend college. And so if they don't make it uh, as an athlete, they can make it as an educator, uh, get their degree, and uh, be able to make a great, uh, a great uh, contribution to society. Absolutely. All right, Senator Lawson, we thank you for your time. Hey, it's great to be here on this wonderful night in Gaston County at East Gaston. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Back to you, Keith. All right. Thank you, Brittany. State Senator Al Lawson uh, checking out some Great high school football in his in his hometown of uh, well he's from Midway so not far away, coach and uh, the Childs High School marching band is on the field. Let's go down and enjoy some of the sights and sounds here at the Insight Sports High School Game of the Week. <laughs> Nothing. Our score as we begin the second half here in Havana, Florida. East Gadsden leading the Childs High Timberwolves, and our Brittany Christie is standing by to give us a little halftime insight. Brittany, absolutely. Or uh, in the huddle, uh, he just made sure that he encouraged his players, make sure that they uh, continue to stay encouraged and uh, continue to attack. All right, as we get set to kick it off for the second half. 
And here we go, the Childs Timberwolves kicking to the East Gasson Jaguars. And here we go, end over end kick. This was going to sail in the end. That's a great looking a kick, very good kick to start the second half. And, uh, the Jaguars will begin first and 10 from their own 20 as we get set for the second half of action. Coach, uh, it was a great first half of it action, was. and uh, East Gatson uh, showed us some big play uh, experience there. They sure did. Sure did. They got the turnover there. They were up, up by eight. And first play hit a big one, which is that's what they say do right after right after you get a turnover and get the ball. Two big pass receptions account for the 14 points on the board for East Gatson. And here we go. It's Thomas Jones from the gun, spread formation, and he gives it to Tony Street. Yep. And this time, the Childs Timberwolves are all over that one. They were Number 35, Tucker Hill, yep. is on the stop for Childs with some help from number 31, Bryce Leonard. Yep. That was a play that they had hurt Childs with a little bit. One back in the backfield, and they had, they had twins on both sides. He just handed it, and he cut it up and kind of got through. But it didn't work that time. Loss of three, second and 13 for East Gadsden. The Jaguars. And uh, they lead it 14 to nothing. Ball is Jones fires over the middle, had his receiver open. He did. Had trips on this side, ran the inside receiver straight across like a post. And he was, he was clearing, but didn't connect. And it was Deshaun Davis, coach, who had that yeah. that first big touchdown for East Gadsden. Sure did. It's going to bring up third down, about 13 yards to go now for the Jaguars. They'll, they'll come back to that one, I think, that play. All right, here we go. Thomas Jones, 6'1", 185, a senior for the Jaguars. Georgia Tech has expressed interest in him, and Jones pulls it down, and he's going to be thrown for a loss. I won't call it a sack, but it's a, it's a tackle for loss. Tackle for loss. And on the stop for the Jaguars is John Gaines and Dallas Cup. Gaines, a senior, 3'2", 30, and Dallas Cup. A sophomore, tenth grader, six foot two sixty. Wow. Brings up fourth down for the Jaguars. And coach, we talked about if there was a weakness that we saw tonight from East Ganson, it was in the kicking, kicking game. game. And uh, this child should end up with decent field position here. Renzel Lightborn is on to punt for East Ganson. And he kind of gets a line drive kick. Chris Reed picks it up, oh, makes a good move, and is going to be taken down at about the 45-yard line of East of Gadsden. And once again, Coach, good field the Childs Timberwolves will have excellent field position. They do. First possession of the second half for see, Childs. See if they can get something moving here. Yep, they'll have it at the Jaguar 45-yard line going right to left. And our good friend Jerome Swain, who is from Havana, Florida, came over tonight. He did. To see uh, this, this battle of Childs and East Gaston High School. Jerome, glad to see you. First and 10. Here we go. Enjoy the distance with him. Avery Thomas hands it off. Cut it up. To Shane Sanders. And once again, Sanders finds a little running room in that East Gaston defense. He's going to be real close to another child's first down. Sure is. They're going to run him out of bounds at about the 38-yard line, and that's going to be a gain of about eight, yep. seven or eight yards on first down. We'll call it second down and three to go. Yep. Charles just needs to settle down. There's still, yeah. there's still plenty of time. Yeah. And stick to the game plan. Stay to your game plan. Stick to your game plan. Don't get too far away from your bread and butter. All right, here we go. Avery Thomas hands it off again to Shane Sanders. This time, he runs right into that front wall of East Ganson. Willie Cox, Marquise Saylor.
Coach, you said you've been coaching for a long time. There's always somebody named Sailor over on here. One of these it teams in like, Gaston County. When I was a Leon. We came over to play back then. It was Quincy Shanks. It seemed like every time we came, there was a Sailor somewhere. <laughs> and they were all good. Third down. About five to go for Childs. And boy, again. An exchange from the center. That's about the third time tonight. Well, Coach. Play before he bobbled it. It wasn't. It wasn't much, but he had to double grab it. It's, they've got issues right there. They need to make sure they get taken care of. Fourth down and about five to go for Childs now. And here we go. Avery Thomas. They're going to offset the eye. Shane Sanders. The eye back. And here we go. Avery Thomas shouts his instructions across his line. Steps back to pass. Fires a slant. That ball is in the air and nearly picked nearly off. Passed. That was a dangerous pass. James Murray had it in his hands but couldn't hold on. James Murray. He'll be replay, he'll be rolling that one back all night long, he saying, will. "Well, I had a, I had an interception." I had an interception. And Murray's just a sophomore coach, yep. another tenth grader out here performing tonight. He probably felt like he had to go for that, but the reality is, you got a quarter and you got eight minutes, and from where they are, if it punted, it, they'd have them down inside the ten, probably. So it's first down and 10. He's got you. The ball's resting at their own 41-yard line. And it will be Thomas Jones under center. Eye formation. And uh, they hand it off to Tony Sweet. And Sweet fights his way to about the 45-yard line. That's a gain of about four on first down. He's second down and about six to go for the Jaguars. <clears throat> Tony Sweet has been a workhorse tonight, Coach. He has. He's done a really good job. Yeah, 5'10", 180. And Tony Sweet. I'd like to know what his stats are right now. I bet they're pretty good. He's just a sophomore, Coach. Wow. They're going to call it set, a three-yard game, yeah, second and seven. They give it to Sweet. Sweet turns the corner. And Sweet flag is going to be driven out of bounds. That's going to go. That. Infraction is going to go against Nicholas Clayton. Yep. He had knocked him out of bounds, but he held on and took he him kept, down. It he didn't need to do that. He, yeah, he, he went way too wide with that. That was going to be a call all the way. So you give up the first down and then tack 15 on top of it. Yeah. They, they, they got in the eye and faked a counter back to their left, and it wasn't there, so he just, he just broke it back. He's a great athlete. Goes against Nicholas Clayton and the Timberwolves. And that was a big 15-yard mark off, and they'll mark the football at the 33-yard line of the Childs High Timberwolves. And once again, the Jaguars are in, uh, in scoring position. They don't. They don't need. They don't need to give East Gaston opportunities. Right. Here we go. They give it to the first back this time. I think that was that's late. It was uh, the ball carrier was the sophomore James Murray. Connor Hansen on the tackle for Childs and an infraction on the play. I think they had a blocker that stayed on his block too long. Yeah, it, it did look like that. He went all around yeah, and took him and, and took his man down. Took yeah. him down, and you know, the play was over. And as an injured East Gaston player on on the field, also. Can't seem to get a number on him. But there's a break in the action in our score. East Gaston 14, Childs High School nothing. We'll be back after this timeout. Best angle right well. Okay. All right, it was number eight. Philanda Lewis, who was cramping up, he comes off the field under his own power. So hopefully he'll be okay. Get some, get some fluids get in some, him. Get some electrolyte back yeah, in. There you go. go. Five yard yeah, five-yard penalty goes against the Jaguars for 
And boy, they run, want to run a flea flicker here. Uh, and and uh, it was all Thomas Jones could do to take the yeah. pitch back. Yeah, it was a, and he ran down. up in there and flipped it back, and he, he threw it. It wasn't a good throw, and yeah. they were lucky to get the ball back. And so now the Jaguars doing a little bit of what Childs was doing early yeah. in the first half and it going looks, the wrong it way. It looks like a first game. Yeah. 7.21 to play, third quarter. It's 14 to nothing. And East Ganson holding on to that lead over the Childs High School Timberwolves. Isolated receiver over here to the near side. Triplets this time to the far boundary for Thomas Jones. And he's got Tony Street in the backfield. Childs digging in. They bring the blitz. Jones throw it downfield. He's got his man. It's caught. And that's a touchdown. Octavius Robinson once again. And Coach Childs gamble with the all, the, all, the, the jailbreak blitz. They sent everybody. And all he did was step back and launch it. That's a good call right there. 49-yard touchdown. And Robinson. Once again, with a great catch and a great run after catch. Sure was. And they're going for two. Well, they're, <laughs> they're bringing the uh, place kicker out. There he is, there he is, there he is. <laughs> they they got to get him some experience. They coach. do. Yeah, yep, he'll get this one. I think it's Francel Lightborn on to attempt a point after. Here's the snap, the placement. And it's time to kick is up. And it's good. It was, it was not the prettiest kick, Coach. As long as it goes between the poles, it counts. He made it. And so, with 6.46 remaining in the third, East Gatson 21, Childs nothing. We'll be back after this timeout. It looks like Deshaun Davis, coach, will tee it up and kick it off for East Gadsden after Datavius Robinson <laughs> scores on another 40. He has a touchdown of 71 and 49 this wow. evening. And the East Gadsden Jaguars take a 21 to nothing lead over the Childs High Timberwolves. He's having quite a night. And here we go. It's a squib kick picked up by Nicholas Clayton. And Clayton's going to be knocked out of bounds on the far sideline at about the 35-yard line. And that's where the Timberwolves begin first and 10. Let's see what they do here. <clears throat> Six thirty-nine to play in the third. Child's got to mount some kind of they gotta do drive something. now. They got to get something now. And we've got an official's timeout on the field, and so with the break in the action, it's a water break. Water break down on the field. We'll be back with the Inside Sports High School Game of the Week after this. All right, here we go. The Timberwolves first down and 10 from their own 35-yard line. Avery Thomas wants to put it in the air, and uh, his pass was intended for Chris Reed, but it was underthrown. Yeah, it was and far. Bring, yeah. I don't, know whether, I, I don't know whether they miscued or Yeah, I think they miscommunicated on the, on the route. On the route or a cut or something. Yeah, second down and 10. Because it wasn't close. Yeah, for Childs. Second down and 10. Timberwolves balls at their own 35-yard line. They trail it 21-0, 636 to play in the third quarter. Okay. Avery Thomas going all the way for the Timberwolves tonight. And here we go. He sets up, throws the pass. That pass intended for Kamari Brown incomplete. It's going to bring up third down and 10. And let's go down to Brittany Christie. She's standing by. Uh, the words that were repeated in the huddle by defensive coordinator Coach Broomfield was keep playing, keep playing. He's continuing to keep his players uplifted and encouraged and looking forward to them um, improving um, throughout the third quarter. All 
All right, thank you, Brittany. And uh, we've got an injury substitution for East Gadsden. Uh, Terrence Nelson, who's had a well of a game he's tonight. Had, he's had a great game. Takes himself out and just kind of collapses on the sideline over here. I wonder if he's got a cramp. He may be cramping up a little bit. And here we go. Third down at 10 from their own 35 for the Charles Timberwolves. And Avery Thomas lays this pass out for Makari Brown. He makes the catch, makes the catch. but he looks like he's going to be about a yard short yep. of the first down. That's what I think. You'll find now that their protection is getting better because at this point in the game, the defenders rush his legs a little tired. <laughs> Sometimes they don't come quite as hard. Third down and one. Childs trailing 21 to nothing. They're going for it. It's third down and one. Uh, it's actually fourth down and one. It's fourth down and one. I bet they didn't over there. They didn't really. They saw that three and they thought they were good. Yeah, they ain't going to go for that. Yeah, illegal procedure is the call against Childs. Yeah, they're not going <laughs> to go for that. Now, Coach Jan has a decision to make. Because if you don't make the first down, you give East Gasson I, I tremendous field position. I'd, I'd find. But Childs is going for it on fourth down and about six to go. And they swing it out here for Chris Reed, and it's incomplete. That pass is intended for number three. It's one of those things and things start going south, they just steamroll. When the wheels come they off, off, they come on off. They come on off. So first and 10 for East Gadsden, they'll take over. At about the 39-yard line of Childs. Thomas Jones and the Jaguar offense. It's been a big play offense tonight. Yes. They give it to Tony Street. Isolation straight up. Tony Street straight ahead. He's going to pick up about four, maybe five. Connor Hansen once again on the stop for Childs. He's been a workhorse in the middle of that Childs defense. He has. He really has. <clears throat> They're going to give him three, second down and seven for East Gasden. And Thomas Jones sets his offense. Receivers to either side, I formation. And this time they give it to Sweet again. He's, a, he's one step away from breaking that. Yeah, takes it all the way down to the 29-yard line, and it's Tucker Hill this time on the stop for Childs. But that should be enough to move the chains, or at least close enough for a measurement. And we've yep. got an injury timeout. We have a timeout on the field, injury timeout. One, two, five, 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 five. With our score, East Gadsden 21 and Childs nothing. We'll be back after this timeout. It's the Insights Sports High School Game of the Week, third down and inches for the East Gaston Jaguars. Belanda Lewis was the injured Jaguar. But I think once again, it's probably just cramps, first game of the season. Yep, I think you're probably right. And the Jaguars are close to another first down in Charles territory. With the ball resting at about the 27 yard line inches to go only 523 remaining now in the third quarter as they reposition the down markers yes moving it moving it around so Make sure the Jaguars good. only need to really get to about the 28-yard line for a first down. Right. Ball spotted right at about the 29, and they're inches away from moving the chains. 
All right, here we go. Third down in inches. And Thomas Jones under center. He has an eye formation. And Jones is going to keep. Goes off tackle. Right behind his left guard, yep. Big Willie Cox. And I think he's going to get the first down. I do too. I think he's got it. First down, Jaguars. First and 10. For East Gadsden, they'll move the chains. And the Jaguars coach once again on the move. Ball's resting at the child's high 29-yard line, and the Jaguars once again threatening. They're pounding that rock. High formation. They give it to Tony Sweet once again. This time, Sweet. Runs into a wall, number 88, David O'Meara, on the stop for the Timberwolves. They were trying to power right off tackle, nothing. Second down and 10 to go for East Gadsden. Now, this is smart offensive football. Oh, yeah. By Coach Corey Fuller. He's got a 21-point lead. He's sitting on it. He's not going to do anything to jeopardize no. that. Take your time, run the ball, burn that clock up. Yep. All right, here we go. Receivers to either side. Once again, an eye formation, and we've got whistles. Delay of game is going to be the call against East Gaston. Once again, this is first game mistakes. It is. Bring up second down and about 15 yards to go now for the Jaguars. Now what will they do? After the delay of game assessment. Four minutes to play in the third quarter. Jaguars lead 21-0 over the Timberwolves. Jones under center. Gives it to a new back in the backfield. That is... Billy Ward, a junior, and it's Brevin Schwartz on the stop for Childs. And he's going to lose a couple of more. Make it third down and about 18 yards to go. Here we go, Jaguars this time. Well, they broke the huddle with 12 men in the, on the field. Can't do that. He tried to sneak off. Yeah. <laughs> but the side judge over here was not, he, he he was not fooled. He wasn't buying that. Oh, okay. Now they wave it off. Okay. I'd like to be able to hear some of that conversation down there. <laughs> well, this is the PG family friendly yes. broadcast. So yeah, it is. We'll leave it for the coaches. Let's leave it, leave it for the <laughs> sideline. We'll leave it for the coaches. Third down, about 18 to go for East Gansden. 3-10 to play in the third. 21-0, the Jaguars lead the Childs High Timberwolves. Will they throw it or just run it and burn more time? It's been all big plays tonight for East Gaston. Three. I've seen they run that route with that inside guy right over the middle again. The one They've hit it two or three times. All right, here we go. Jones has, has boy, he had tremendous pressure that time, and we've got penalty markers thrown. A couple of them. They did run that route. <laughs> okay, the referee 
Matthews. Going across the field to converse with uh, Coach Jan. We're still awaiting the official indication. On those two flags thrown. Yep. Legal procedure against East Gaston. Personal foul against Shallow against the defense. And once again, that will drive a coach crazy. It will. You just can't, you can't, you're already in a hole. You can't do that. It's third down and 18, and now it's third down and six. And seven. Yep. Now he can go two down. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see that drag come across the middle, Coach. Yep. I'm with you. Here we go. Jones sets up. Fires. That pass is picked off. Reverend Swartz. And Swartz returns it to about the 36-yard line of the Timberwolves. And so Childs gets a big break. They do. And another penalty mark on that, the that play. That makes the game go. <laughs> An illegal block in the back by Child, so that will mm. back him up. But the interception will stand, yes. and it's a. At least they got the ball. They got a turnover against a threatening, a threatening. East Gaston team. Oh, yeah, they had two downs and only five or six to go. Boy, this is going to move them all the way back. To about the 14-yard line. Is that right? Yes. No, it's inside the 10. It's at the like the nine yard line. Wow. Once again, those are first game mistakes that you you hope you hope you correct them. Yeah. So the biggest improvement <laughs> is between game one and game two. Correct. I've heard that and I believe it. All right, here we go. Avery Thomas. There's one out, got a man downfield. It's Makari Brown. He's got it at the 40, 35. And Makari Brown is going to be stopped all the way down at the 16-yard line of East Gaston. That's a great play. It is. That's a very good pass play. Number Kamari, Kamari Brown on the reception. Don't know how many yards that play covered, but a lot. It was a lot. Because yeah, what did you say? We were on the nine down here? On the nine yard line, and so we're down at the, what is that, the 16? 16. I'll let you all figure it out. I'll call this next place. All right. Se <laughs> 75 yards. 75 yards, and they give it to Sanders, and he goes in for the score. That's what they should have been running all along. Outside zone. They haven't They haven't stopped it. Shane Sanders, is there, is there another marker on the play? I would hope not. Shane Sanders takes it in. They're from talking the and pointing. I'm kidding. Holding oh. is the call against Child. So it comes back. And that's going to negate an outstanding run by Shane Sanders. Wow. Sanders took it to the house. He did. But it's going to come back. Well, Coach, I'd run it again.
<laughs> I would too. I'd run the exact run, same oh, play. I would too. If it didn't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Thomas, this time from the gun. Sanders in the backfield. And this time he's going to throw it for the end zone for Makari Brown. And even if he caught it, he was so far out of bounds. It wouldn't have, can't wouldn't have counted. Come ring up. Third down and 10 now for the Charles Timberwolves from the 16-yard line of East Gaston. Wouldn't this be bad? Actually, the 14-yard line of East Gaston. That's, this would be the second time tonight that Down they've been in threatening deep. and they didn't score. And didn't get anywhere. And they actually did score there and had a penalty. Right. Here we go. This time they give it to Shane Sanders again. And another penalty marker comes down. Sanders twisting and turning. Takes, his, takes it down inside the 10-yard line. But again, it's another marker on the play. Looks like it's going to be against the Timberwolves. Holding is the call against Childs. So they scored one touchdown, called back on a penalty, and then they turned it over they on they a two they yard. Were the two line. and fumbled a yep. snap. Second down, about 20 yards to go now for the Timberwolves. They can get a first down at about the four or three yard line. Thomas wants to pass, pulls it down. He decides to run, fights his way forward. There's not enough room up in there. There's an injured Jaguar down. A minute 36 to play, and East Gaston Jaguars leading 21 up on the Inside Sports High School Game of the Week. We'll be back after this timeout. The injured East Gaston Jaguar was Willie Cox, 6'3", 315, a senior, and he has had a well of a night, Coach. He's going to bring up third down and about 17 to go for the Timberwolves. Avery Thomas steps up in the pocket, wants to pass, fires in the end zone, tipped in the air, is intended for Chris Reed, but it's broken up and it falls incomplete. And that's some good defensive work down there. It's a good job by the free safety. Gonna bring up fourth down for the Childs Timberwolves. Yeah, he had pretty good protection. He stepped up and got it off. Fourth down for Childs. And about 17 yards to go. Avery Thomas. And the Timberwolves decked out tonight in white. The road whites with black helmets. In the corner and again. Throws it down there for Makari Brown. Can't hold on. Nope. It's going to fall incomplete. And defending. Jalen Key. Is it Jalen Key? Depending on the play, he said it's number two. Detavious Robinson, who's had the two big touchdowns. Yep. Yeah, it was Jalen Key. Jalen Key. Jalen Key broke the pass up. And so the Jaguars will take over. First down and 10 at their own 23 yard line. I'm saying he'll try to control the ball here. Yeah, I think so. Keep it away. Minute 20 to play in the third quarter. 21 nothing. East Gaston. High formation for Thomas Jones. Gives it to Sweet. Sweet tries to get outside, but he can't go. And that's a great tackle over there by Brevin Schwartz. Sure was. He couldn't, he tried, he couldn't get outside. He stuck that stiff arm out there, but he did. Schwartz grabbed him and brought him on down. 
Loss of about four. Second down and 14 for East Gaston. It's been a long third quarter. <laughs> Here we go. Thomas Jones under center. I formation. And they give it the sweep once again. And once again, it's Brevin Schwartz right there, along with number 88, David O'Meara, or Childs. And it's going to bring up third down and about 14 to go for East Gaston. Coach, we got a good one next week. We do. We'll be over at, uh, in Tallahassee's Gene Cox Stadium for Rickards. And Leon. That would be a good one. Be some fireworks there. That's the end of the third quarter with our score. Eats Gasden 21. Charles Timberwolves nothing. We'll be back after this timeout. All right, the Timberwolves may be down, but the Charles cheerleaders are definitely keeping them up. I'm with. I'm with Shay Sutton right now. She's the head coach for the uh, Child's Cheerleaders. Shay, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Uh, you are a former cheerleader yourself at FAMU. Uh, what advice do you share with your squad uh, during this game right now? Um, I really tell them to keep the players up because they're the closest things to the players, and then we'll worry about the crowd. But keep the player spirits up. All right. Well, thank you so much, Shay, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. On first down, it was a fumble on the play, yep. but the Jaguars retained possession. <clears throat> fourth oh. down, the Jaguars will be cutting the ball. And it's going to bring up fourth down and about eight to go. The Jaguars will punt. And on to punt is Lightburn. For Timberwolves, number nine. Shane Sanders. Shane Sanders back they to about receive got the punt. Sanders is going to pick this one up. He eludes one Jaguar, turns upfield, inside the midfield strike, and he's going to be taken down at about the 47, 48-yard lines for progress. And so Childs will begin first and 10 from there. And another penalty marker on the play. And the penalties, Coach, also slow the game down. Woo, yes, every time they stop, and have to. I like I like to know the combined penalty yardage of the two teams tonight. Yeah. And also the. I would, well, we already know that Robinson has had a big night. Big night. So yeah, the infraction is going to go against Childs. Gonna be a block in the back and move the Childs Timberwolves back to their own 43 yard line. First and 10, Childs. And here we go. Avery Thomas fires one downfield and nearly caught by Chris Reed, but it's gonna fall in complete second down and 10. Yep. So the Timberwolves now have no choice but to sort of abandon that game plan to get back in this one. Oh, they they pretty much got to now. Yeah. Okay, EMT truck. Yeah. I'm gonna see if uh, maybe we can get Brittany to give us an update on um, Big Willie Cox. He came out of the ball game yeah. earlier. I want to make sure he's okay. But here we go. They hand it off to Shane Sanders. And Sanders this time is going to be stopped behind Smothered. the line of scrimmage. And, and at this point in the game, the Jaguars are all over that play. They are. They're, they've seen it too many times. <laughs> Number 71 on the stop for East Gaston. He's not listed on our roster. 
But he's in the books. He's in the books, you're right. He's in the books for the tackle. All right, let's see what Charles has got going here. Third down, about 12. All right, here we go. Avery Thomas looking to pass. Flushed out of the pocket, swings it out here. It's caught by Chris Reed, but there's yeah. not much room to, no. for him to work after he no. makes the reception. You run a flare pass into the, into the sidelines, and they got three defenders. <clears throat> Only going to get about a yard on the play. It's going to bring up fourth down and about 11 to go. So maybe two yards gain on the play, fourth and 11. Yeah. He's, at this point, he's about got to go for it. Fourth down and 11 yards to go for the Charles Timberwolves. And Avery Thomas and his offense ready to go. Receivers to either side. Shane Thomas in the backfield. Thomas fires downfield and overshoots Chris Reed, the intended receiver. And the Charles Timberwolves will turn the ball over. And yeah. East Gaston will take it over. He's rolling to his left and he's right-handed. And when you do, you've got to get those hips turned so you can... Get it out. So the Jaguars will take over at the Child's 43-yard line with 9:09 .09 to play in the ball game. Legs. Yep. Oh, mine too. Sitting all that time. First and 10 for East Gadsden. The Jaguars will have the ball first and 10 at the 43-yard line of the Timberwolves. And uh, Coach Corey Fuller now going to put some substitutions in, get some of his younger players some playing time. Playing time. 9 to go and a 21-0 lead. Treshawn Bunyan is in. At one offensive lineman. And we've got, looks like a delay of game. Five yard mark off against the Jaguars. Now to move them back five. And make it first down and 15 to go for the Jaguars. Yep. <clears throat> We got another whistle. Got an illegal substitution? I guess. I, late in the game, my experience is late in the game when you haven't, you're planning to try to win, you're not planning to sub, and late right. in the game you start trying to wholesale send them in and out, yeah. and stuff like that happens. Yeah, illegal substitution is the call. And that'll make it first down and now 20 yards to go for the Jaguars. New back in the backfield, that's Tyler Venisi. It's gonna be second down and about 19 yards to go for East Gadsden. Tyler Venisi has been held pretty much in check tonight, but it was Tony Street was the workhorse. He was the workhorse. He would find creases up in there and go. Yeah. Went deep. Jones once again has his man, Robinson. Uh -oh. And he's going to take it down to the 15-yard line. Without question, Coach, our yep. offensive player of the game, is Dottavious Robinson. Got to be. Got to be. The Jaguars are now in the territory, into the territory of the Timberwolves. And so, East Gasson with the first and 10 now. Ball's resting about the 16-yard line. Really no room to run there. Nope. He's running that clock. And on the stop for Childs is number 33, Amari Gaynor. 
second down and 10 to go for the Jaguars. Seven forty-five to play in the ball game now. Jaguars leading twenty-one to nothing, but also threatening here in the red yep. zone. He's going. He's going to try a fade, and uh, not, not close. Yeah, miscommunication yeah, between all the, the way. quarterback and receivers. The, the Robinson ran the out instead of the fade. Yeah, right. And it's going to bring up third down and about nine to go for East Gaston. Well, it's pretty much a sure thing. Detavious Robinson is our offensive player yep. of the game. I know Childs is sending a lot of young ones in now. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Terrence Nelson, probably our defensive player of the game. He's had a well of a night. Toss Sweet out here for Sweet. He fumbles it, but re retrieves his own fumble. And it's going to bring, it, bring up fourth down for the Jaguars. Fourth down and about 12 to go for the East Gaston Jaguars. They lead it 21 nothing with 6.59 to play right. in the ball game. Jones out of the pocket, fires downfield. That pass nearly picked Ooh. off. He threw, he threw that in a big crowd. Tucker Hill, the outside linebacker, nearly got his hands on it, but it's going to bring up first down now for Childs. They'll take over at their own 19-yard line. Six minutes and 40 seconds left. Zero. At the time, we have a... All right, it's six minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Timeout here in Havana on the Insights High School Sports Game of the Week. East Gadsden 21, Childs nothing. We'll be back after this timeout. All right, six minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the ball game. East Gadsden with a 21 nothing lead over the Childs Timberwolves. And the Wolves have it first and 10 from at their 19-yard line. They got a new running back in. They run the zone play again. Again, and once first again, down. they pick up a first down. It's uh, Isaac Bocham, senior, 5'11", 175 in now for the Wolves, Timberwolves. And he picks up a first down. Good-looking run. Going to us with the no and here we go. Thomas fires on the out. That pass is complete. Over there by number 26. Uh, we don't have him listed on our roster, but it's one of their backups. He's in the books with a reception. He is. Second down and two for the Timberwolves. And Avery Thomas is going to keep this one. He's going to pick up the first down and more and then scoot out of bounds. That's a smart play. Smart play. By the senior quarterback. Got out. Saved some time. Well, Thomas Jones for East Gasson is being looked at by Georgia Tech. That's Avery Thomas, though, the quarterback for Childs. Childs. He's going all the way. And he's had some bright moments, and he's had some – Areas that he's got to work on. Yep. All right, Thomas lets one fly. Oh, boy, it hits Chris Reed in the hands, but he can't hold on. That's good defense yeah, down great there. Great defense right there. Number six for Jordan Thomas defending on the play. Quarterback court. put the money right, put it right on the money. He yeah. just didn't catch it. Yeah, Jordan Thomas, an excellent play on the ball. And it's going to bring up second down and ten. For Childs. 525 to go. Avery 
Thomas from the gun once again. Rolls, Sprint, looking to pass. out to the right. There you go. That pass was intended for Jordan Roberts, but it's incomplete. Sprinted out a little flood route to the right. So bring up third down and 10 to go for Childs. 5.46 to play. So Coach Jan has some work to do, Coach. He does. He's, he'll, he'll, they'll work this week. He's had some bright moments. There are some things that they did extremely well, but the turnovers and the penalties, yep. they've got to solve those. Got to. Third down and 10 for Childs. Avery Thomas, blitz coming, sets up the screen beautifully, picks up a block, and yep. he's going to have a first down. That yep. pass complete. That was, a, that was a good screen play. Set deep. Leaked him out to the right and threw it. Shane Sanders. Well, Shane Sanders has led the child's offense tonight. He's a 5'10", 170-pound senior. And I don't know if anybody's looking at him, but somebody certainly should be. Yeah, he's had a good night. Yeah. He's got talent. Here we go. First down and 10 for Avery Thomas and the Timberwolves. And Thomas going to throw this one out. Boy, it's caught. That's a great catch. He did. He went down and got it. Jordan Roberts, and that's going to move the sticks. That's another first down for the Childs Timberwolves. But we've got another penalty marker. Let's see what the infraction is. Shot block, Shot block against the Timberwolves, and once again, those are the those kinds of mistakes have to be cleared up. They've got to be cleared up. Those, those are major penalties right, right. there. So it'll make it first down and about 25 yards to go well. for the Timberwolves. First and 25 with 5.03 to play. <laughs> so first in Chattahoochee. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost out of the county. Great catch. That pass is caught over here by number 26 who's not on our roster, but he's in the books. Yep. That's a, that's a good route and a good catch. Looks like it's Dylan Hare. Dylan Hare on the receiving end of that cast, pass. Make it second down and 15. So he picks up 10 yards. 21-0 our score as the Jaguars lead. The Charles Timberwolves with 429 to play. Our Brittany Christie is standing by. She's going to have an interview with the, I think it's the band director, but we'll get to it after this play. Avery Thomas, second down and 15. Fires one downfield, and this yep. one nearly picked off. I think the defender yep. got blinded by the lights. Yeah, he was, quarterback was lucky to get that off. He had all kind of heat on him. And we got a personal foul called against East Ganson, so they're going to give up 15 yards with that infraction. And let's go down to Brittany. Brittany? Probably can't hear for the band. Yeah, look, she's trying to interview the band director. She probably couldn't hear no, because it, of the band, no, right? Yeah, and, and the band director might be busy right now. Yeah. All right, here we go. First and 10 for the Charles Timberwolves now at the 35-yard line of East Gansden with 4.23 to play in the ball game now. 21-0, the Jaguars lead. But the Timberwolves at least want to get on the board before the night's over. Avery Thomas pulls it down, decides he's going to run, and scoops out of bounds. Thomas is going to pick up. Going to bring up second down. See what they Check mark. Out about, let's talk about 10. 
Nope. About nine. About nine to go. Yep. Second and about maybe they eight. They moved it again. Maybe now eight, say, eight, yeah. About eight yards. You're right. Go. You're right. Kept moving that thing. Put it in the ground. All right, here we go. Avery Thomas sw swings it out there to yep. Got him in Sanders. Space. And San Sanders breaks a tackle. He's still on his feet and takes it down inside the 20-yard line, down near the 15-yard line of East Gadsden. He's a playmaker. Yes, he is. He's a playmaker. That flare route they're running, it looks like they ought to get him wider. It's to, yeah, to, he has put, put, tremendous put, speed on the boundary. Well, don't let one guy cover two. Yeah. Separate them, make two cover two. Thomas throws for the end zone. Pass is caught. It's a touchdown. He got it. That pass is caught by Curtis Hatch. That pass is caught by Curtis Hatch. And that's going to be like a 19-yard touchdown. The Wolves are on the board. That's the first. <laughs> Have you ever seen the band? The band's gone. They're leaving. Beat the crowd, I guess. Curtis Hatch on a 19-yard reception. And the Wolves on to attempt a point after. This would be Jake Meyer. Snap placement. Boy, it's kicked. Yeah. He, the, uh. the placement was not good. No, it wasn't good. And he had to stop, and then by then it's too late. And so the Jaguars with 356 to play lead the Timberwolves 21 to 6. And we'll be back after this timeout. All right, 21 to 6 our score. East Gadsden Jaguars leading the Childs Timberwolves. Childs gets on the board, though, with a beautiful 19-yard touchdown pass to Curtis Hatch. Jaguars attempt an onside kick, and the Childs Timberwolves say they have it. Wow. And let's see. And they do. Wow. So let's give the – Let's give them credit. Let's give Childs some credit. They're not Ooh. giving up the fight. No, they're not giving up the fight at all. They still got 352. And so, Childs comes back with an onside kick and makes it. Yeah. And they'll begin first and 10 at the 48-yard line of East Gaston. This game is not over yet. Well, that's something Coach Fuller, I'm sure, will be working on next week. Yeah, he ain't liking that. An onside kick. Kamari Brown is wide to the far boundary. Along with Chris Reed, isolation over here to the near side, and Avery Thomas swings one downfield for Brown, and it falls incomplete. Second down and 10 for the Timberwolves. Second down, 10. Let's see what we got. First down, long go pattern. Yep. Didn't make it. They've got Shane Sanders back in the ball game. He's been the workhorse tonight, and they flare him out, but Thomas Ooh. tries to keep it, and he runs into that big wall. Yep. It's nothing there. Marquis Saylor once again on the stop <laughs> for East Gadsden. Third down and ten for the Jaguar uh, for the Timberwolves. There you go. Correction. Avery Thomas sets up, looks to pass, fires across the middle. There got you go. Man. Got a crossing pattern. That pass pattern. is caught for Chris Reed, spinning and turning. Got to hold on to the football, and he takes it down inside the 30-yard line near the 25, and that's a first down for Giles. Ran kind of a deep crossing pattern. It was wide open. Three oh five to play, and here come the Timberwolves. Ball's just outside the red zone at about the twenty-three yard line. 
They go twins. Thomas fires over there and ah. overshoots the intended receiver. He was uh, he was open. He was open. Another penalty. Yep. Holding on Charles. Dylan Hare was the intended receiver, but there's holding on the play by the Timberwolves, and so that'll back them up 10. Make it second down. Looks like about. That's a big mark off. <laughs> yeah, it is a big mark off. That looks like a 15-yard mark it does. instead of a 10-yard mark It looks off. like a big one. First down. First down and long. That's yeah, first down and real long. <laughs> yeah. About 25 yards to go. Avery Thomas sets up the screen. And here comes Shane Sanders. And Sanders is going to get a lot of that back. He's got the first down. He's got more. Shane Sanders is in. Touchdown Good for, for Childs. Good for him. That's a great play. Great play. No, take that. You take that. Coach, take that. Yeah, you, you take it. I'm good. I really I am. You're Shane, the one. Shane Sanders. That that coach that went about 40 yards. It did. <laughs> and just like that, we've got a ball game. Well, they had 25 or 30 to get the first, and you still got another. Yeah, that was at least 40. Will they go on side again, you think? Yeah, uh, if it works. Yeah. They got no reason. Up. They got no reason not to. And it's good. And so with our score, East Gasson 21, Childs 13 with 243 to play. We'll be back to our Insights High School Game of the Week after this timeout. East Gasson Coach Corey Fuller had to have his hands team up there, Coach, because yeah, the Charles Timberwolves scored. <laughs> they were coming after it. In a minute and 13 seconds, they put two touchdowns on the wow. board. That's, that's impressive. Here we go. They hand it off. All right, looks like not much. Is that Tony Sweets again? No, it's uh, it's number 20, Tyler Venisi. And the Timberwolves now take timeout. Not much there. It's going to be second down and 10 yeah. for East Gasson when play is resumed. Coach, we got a good one next week. It's uh, Rickards and Leon. And Leon. Yep. At Gene Cox at Stadium. Gene Cox Stadium. Be right there. That'll be a big one. And they both had big ball games tonight. You know, big Leon had Live Oak and uh, Rickards had to go play at Madison, I think. Right. Not always the most fun for us. It's exciting, but. With two minutes and 34 seconds to play in this ball game, the Timberwolves have some new life. They're, they they're energized. They are energized right now. They're like, hey, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. This one's not over yet. Here we go. Thomas Jones. From the gun, hands it off to Tony Sweet, and Sweet, he goes right back. He goes right back and picks up a first down. Puts that one back in the back, lets him lateral step and cut that thing straight up, and then he just bends it right back against the grain. And that's a first down for the Jaguars, and moves the ball to about the 37-yard line, and that takes a little wind out of those sails. Yeah, every first down they get, they can just slow down and take their time. Yep, 2.23, and the clock is ticking. Right. Uh, just spoke with Coach Bob Street, and he said that in the huddle, he just wants his team to hold the ball and finish the game out strong. All right, thank you, Brittany. Here we go. Thomas Jones gives it to Tony Street. That's, that's probably Bob Street's son. He probably is. And he picks up another 10, 12 yards on the play, and that's going to be another Jaguars first yeah, that's, down. That's, That's a little bit demoralizing. Yes, it is right there. It's the closer they get to that goal line. All 
Our friend, the PA announcer up here, just told him to wake up, Jaguar fan. Wake him up. <laughs> wake him up. They were, they were about to lull to sleep there, but those it's, two touchdowns woke him up. It's, it's about 10-20. It's been a long game. Here we go. Tony Street gets the call once again. This time, not much there. On the stop for Childs is number 31, Nicholas Simmons. A minute 54 to play in the ball game now. Well, Coach Datavius Robinson is our offensive player of the game. Robinson scored for East Gaston tonight on a 71-yard pass and came back and scored on a 49-yard pass and then caught another big pass big, that set him up. Big play down here. Yeah, he's had a really good night. He had a, bit, a big night tonight. And if nobody's looking at him, that's the talent they should be looking at. They should be checking him out. We've seen some talent on display over here. In both games that we've done, Coach, we've we seen have. some tremendous talent. We have. High school football players in the Leon County area. And a little bit later on in the season, we're going to get up to South Georgia. Yeah, that'll that'll be interesting to watch yeah. too. That'll be just like a college game. They play they play big time football there. Too. Yes, sir. Here we go. Thomas Jones gives it to Tony Street once again, and Street strikes it all the way down near the ten yard line. He, he gets that he gets that handoff coming in like he's going over the guard, like an inside zone play, and then bends it all the way back. On his own. So, the Jaguars will be able to get a first down at the one yard line as the ball is spotted at the 11 with a minute 34 to play in the ball game. And the Jaguars threatening now at the Timberwolves 11. They give it to Sweet once again. And Sweet fights his way down. Street fights his way down near the five-yard line. Yep, they ran the inside zone again. And it, this time he just stayed with it. He didn't bend it back. Well, uh, Tony Street will sleep Tony really well Street. tonight. Oh, yes, he will. <laughs> I hope he gets him a good snack before he goes to bed. <laughs> he deserves it. Yes, he does. Here we go. Jaguar sent twin receivers over here to the near boundary and an isolated receiver to the far boundary, but we already know that Tony Street's going to get the, get the football. Yeah, he is. And he's down to inside the five-yard line to about the four. And Childs takes timeout with 34.8 seconds remaining. That'll be the Timberwolves' last timeout of the evening. And it's 21 to 13, East Gaston. They dominated the game, but Childs came roaring back. The Insights Sports High School Game of the Week continues after this break. 34.8 seconds remaining in the ball game. East Gaston with a 21 to 13 lead over the Childs Timberwolves. East Gaston with an impressive drive to kind of shut the door the on the Timberwolves. Thomas Jones under center. Back, drops, back. drops back and he's and, he takes and takes a knee and that's terrible. Yeah, that was terrible. He, that's a cheap shot. Yeah, cheap. especially he, since he was there, they're trying they're, to they're trying to let the game in. They're, let it, they're letting the game in. And this guy, Amari Gaynor, comes out and hits hits the quarterback. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that. That's unsportsmanlike. That's not, and I'm sure Coach Jan will deal with that. And now with them moving the ball half the distance to the goal, yeah. don't be surprised don't if be Corey surprised. Fully, he may just run it now. Corey Fully just might go on and stick it in there now. Yo, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was doing the right thing. He's going to end the game and roll with it. Yeah, that, that was not cool. No. 
27.5 seconds remaining. I'm sure Coach Jan is going to have a conversation with him. Oh, yeah, he doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't like that now. First and goal to goal for the Jaguars. Ball is right at about the five-yard line. But Coach Fuller, being the sportsman that he is, is going to let the clock run out. Yep. So give some credit to Corey Fuller for good sportsmanship, and he has his team ready to come out and shake hands with the Childs Timberwolves. And the Jaguars of East Ganson are victorious 21-13 to tonight in their home season opener at Jaguar Stadium. Our Brittany Christie is going to be standing by in just a minute, but let's recap the scoring. Uh, the Jaguars got on the board first in the first quarter, two minutes and eight seconds. Deshaun Davis, a 24-yard touchdown pass from Thomas Jones. The two-point conversion was good, and the Jaguars took the early eight to nothing. Dottavius Robinson got on the board with his first touchdown pass of the night, 71 yards. The kick was no good, but... Eight plus six equal to 14. And then Robinson scored again in the third quarter on a 49-yard touchdown pass. Lightborn's kick made it 21 to nothing. And then here came the Timberwolves. Hatch on a 19-yard pass. The kick was no good. Put six on the board for Childs. And then Sanders on a 40-yard touchdown pass. The kick was good and made it our final score, 21 to 13. Our Brittany Christy is standing by, and we'll go down to the field. She's with Coach Corey Fuller. All right, Coach Fuller, uh, with the 13-21 to 21, uh, win for uh, this yeah, game, uh, tell me what you're able to take note uh, from this game here. Uh, we we got to learn how to finish. We should we, we should actually uh, – this game should have been a, a shutout, uh, but we, we didn't finish the game well, and I didn't really appreciate our character at the end of the game, but that's when you come off a losing season. It takes a lot to learn how to win. All right, you're getting ready for uh, Florida High next week. What would you say uh, specifically, uh, defensively rather, or offensively, you need to be prepared for for next week? Oh, we're just going to keep doing what we do. We play physical football. That's what our game is. That's what we're going to do. All right. Thank you, Coach, for your time. Thank you. Coach Corey Fuller with a big win tonight, Coach. This was, was a, big a big win. Oh, it was a very big win for him. And uh, they lost to Childs uh, uh, one year ago. Have Don Tavius Robinson here, wide receiver. Don Tavius. Okay. All right, go ahead. We have Don Tavius Robinson here, wide receiver for East Gaston. How are you doing tonight? Just fine. Absolutely. Uh, you had two uh, touchdowns tonight. Uh, tell me what it took to uh, make sure that you were able to get into the end zone. Coach Fuller always said, just work. That's all it takes, just work. Absolutely. And how would you say uh, the East Gaston team prepared um, to make sure that you were ready for this game today? Well, we prepared this ever since December. We've been running. Running and running. That's all we've been doing. Absolutely. All right, well, Don Tavius, a good job, and uh, we thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. And only won one game yes. last season. So to start the season off with a victory uh, is a great, it's big. great way to start. 21-13, our final score. East Ganson defeats the Childs Timberwolves, and that's going to do it for the Insight Sports High School Game of the Week for – Coach Jim Sauls, this is Keith Miles, and for Mickey Clayton, our executive producer, Jefferson Walker IV, our engineer, and the Inside Sports production team, sideline reporter Brittany Christie, and Giselle Thomas, who joined us on tonight. We're going to say good night from East Gadsden High School in Havana, Florida. In Havana, Florida.